Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. So, first of all, as always, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. All of you that have subscribed to my channel, that watch my channel, those of you who like my videos, uh, or even just people who just sit at home and watch the videos. Some people don't want to subscribe because they don't want notifications. I understand that. Um, but thank you for any way that you participate in my channel. I want to thank all the people who join in my chats when I do lives or, or leave comments. Um, I try to read all the comments. Sometimes I can't, can't quite read them. Um, but I try my very best to. And I appreciate every comment as long as it's not nasty, obviously. Uh, something else I just want to make people aware of is sometimes YouTube do hide comments. You'd be surprised what YouTube will pick up in a comment. It could be a word like hatred or a word like, um, I don't know, and they put them in the hidden comments for me to look at. And sometimes I don't remember to go into the hidden comments. I have to go into them and I have to either approve or disapprove them. Um, but quite often, you know, so I've had people say to me, oh, you've removed my comment. I do not remove the only comments that I remove are really nasty ones. I do remove those. They probably would get withheld by YouTube anyway, and then I wouldn't approve them. Um, or, as you know, comments that mention other channels. Just because I don't want to get into any channel wars, um, you know, I, I just don't mention other channels full stop. I don't criticise them. I don't, you know, I have my channels that I like watching. And um, so just that, that's all. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that. So if your comment does disappear, let me know by all means, you know, but don't think that it's me who's removed it automatically because it may not be. And it, all it may need is me to go into hidden comments and authorise it and it will pop back up again. The other thing I want to thank, of course, are my members. Thank you so much to all of you that have become, become a member of my channel. I really enjoy the members' lives on a Thursday. And um, I've, all, uh, I've also got back into the novel again now because I'm serialising uh, my crime novel on the members section. And anyone who wants to become a member, it is €1.99 a month. And um, you get access to the members' lives at any time, even if you can't make the live, um, you can watch it at any time. It's always there for you to watch. And also you get to hear the exclusive um, release of my new crime novel, which I'm serialising. Hope You know, people seem to be enjoying it. I hope so. Uh, I'm enjoying writing it, actually. Just time, isn't it? Time is always the factor. Just, uh, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day. Uh, I also want to thank anyone who sent me a super, bought me a, a Kofi, paypal me these are all ways you uh, support my channel i really appreciate that because the more support that i get the more time i can devote to the channel um because oh and also a few of you have joined as members over on my learn spanish channel uh so thank you for that as well so anybody who wants to learn spanish we're doing members lives on there every friday afternoon going through anything that anybody wants to talk about as far as learning Spanish is concerned. So if you're interested in learning Spanish, I think that channel is €2.99 a month to join. And um, at the moment, there's a members live on a Friday, but depending on how it goes and how many members I get, I might uh, uh, change it to, you know, actually split the levels at the moment. Everybody is welcome to ask me anything they want to know about Spanish, and we'll see how that goes as time goes on. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> I'm ready to start now. So, who I'm going to talk about today is a very interesting case. And I wanted to do this case because the other day I did the case about Harold who um, pushed his wife off a mountaintop for the insurance money. And then it turned out he'd actually done a similar thing well, he'd actually killed his first wife, but it appeared to be an accident. And so he was finally 
court for both those murders. And um, what I wanted to do is, you know, I don't want people to think I'm always picking on men. Unfortunately, it does tend to be men that do these kind of things. So I'm trying to balance it up. I know that women do nasty things as well. I think women, though, you know, you'll see in this case that I'm going to talk about today, it's more often with, by poisoning that women do these things or something a bit more... Uh, Gosh, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, probably to do with the physical strength side of things. Um, quite often, uh, women do do this. Um, poisoning is a common way of killing someone for a woman. And that's basically what happened in this case. So this is the case of Stacey Astor. Now, you may have heard of this case. It was a, a massive case in its time. I mean, it was a little while ago, not that long ago. I mean, I've tried to, I tried to find like a reasonably um, current one or not too long ago this happened. And the, the, this case is actually quite breathtaking in the, not only what she did to two husbands, but Stacey Castor tried to, uh, implicate her daughter Ashley when she realized that the police were getting close she actually tried to kill her daughter Stacy uh, uh, sorry her daughter Ashley make it look like a, a self-deletion and leave a note confessing to the MURDERs so this woman not only did this to her two husbands for insurance money, but then tried to extricate herself from the situation when the police were getting close by implicating her daughter, Ashley, and she had two daughters, Ashley and Bree, and even trying to kill her. And this is not a... I mean, not that it would make it right, even if she wasn't in a good relationship with her daughter, but she was. Her daughter thought of her as her best friend. You know, her daughter had no idea that her mother was capable of that narcissism. You know, she loved her mum. And she thought her mum loved her. So this is the case of Stacy Castor. Let's chat. Okay, I'm going to show you first some photos so you get an idea of, you know, who we're talking about. Now, I'm, I've known about this case for a while. I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. I will be using some help here uh, just for dates and, you know, I'm not very good with dates and stuff and those sort of details. So I'm a chatter. You know, if people don't like it, uh, that's just the way I am. I like to chat, you know, my videos not about precise this, that or the other. They're chats for entertainment purposes only. For people that are interested in true crime and just, you know, want to sort of hear about a case, you know. And I, I watched, a, what was it? Oh, it was a very interesting YouTube uh, video the other day. I can't remember who it was by because I watched that many. But it was somebody saying, or was it that po a podcast I was listening to? It might be a podcast that I'm just about to show on. Uh, I will be showing on my channel because it's about Nicola Bully. Um, anyway, they were asking this psychologist, you know, why are people interested in true crime? And the biggest percentage of people that are interested in true crime are women as well. And they were saying like, how it's interesting that, you know, although women tend to be the main, in the main the victims of true crime, but they tend to like uh, hearing stories of true crime more. Why? You know, because it is quite scary. I think that sometimes I think, oh, my God, why am I? You know, you watch it and you get scared and then you think, well, why did I watch that? Or, you, you know, it's quite uh, disturbing, isn't it, sometimes? But it's really interesting what the psychologist said. She said it's almost like a, a can be seen as a sort of self-preservation thing that women watch these things to get, you know, not not knowing that they're doing it for that reason. 
to get clues of what to avoid, etc. You know, they're intrigued by it because they don't want to fall victims to it. So maybe that's the case with men as well, because, of course, a lot of men are victims of true crime. Uh, less men, I think, uh, in these sort of cases. Of, well, I don't know if she exerted coercive control or not. But anyway, she definitely, uh, you know, you could definitely call her a black widow, as in fact she, what she did get called at the time. Anyway, so here she is. With one, this is her first husband. This poor guy here. Um, let me just go on. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm gonna need to find out some details. So, yeah, the guy with the moustache there. In fact, I'm gonna share this tab instead because it will give you, I'll be able to read you out the information at the same time you can see the pictures. So who was uh, Stacey Castor? So she was born on July the 24th, 1967 in Clay, New York. But not much is known about her early life because later, you know, her later infamy overshadowed her youth. But her mother says that her daughter once envisioned great things for herself. So her mother, Judy Eaton, said she was very intelligent. She wanted to be a paralegal or a lawyer. However, then when she was 17, she met Michael Wallace. So this is her first husband. Now, it's very young, isn't it? It, it? You don't think you're too young at the time, but apparently she abandoned her dreams when she met him. Um, and then just they got married. And she said at the time that Michael was the love of her life. And she said, it said this after his death, I knew five minutes after I met him that I was going to marry him. And on April the 7th, 1990, she married Michael Wallace. So apparently to outsiders, it looked like they had a strong marriage. Eaton recalled that her daughter was as happy as she'd ever been following her marriage. So... Um, State, I don't like it when they use the surnames. Michael and Stacy had uh, two daughters, Ashley and Brie, and Castor or Stacy seemed well suited for motherhood. Now, this is what Castor said about the daughter that she later tried to implicate for murder and kill. I knew from the minute Ashley was born, my whole reason for being here was to take care of her. Yeah, anyway, uh, Ashley was the oldest daughter. So apparently everything wasn't so rosy beneath the surface. She later complained that uh, Michael drank too much and they had not much money, although they both worked full time with opposite schedules. Anyway, then in 1999, so how long did she, she married him in 1990? So it's not that long later, really. In 1999, things seemed to get worse and Michael got sick. So let me do, I just want to check that you're seeing this. Okay, thank you. Um, and so she said, Stacy said he was having a hard time walking and he was having a hard time talking. Um, this well, this is what Ashley said, his daughter. And one time he sat up, he just vomited across the coffee table, laid back, that back down, and went to sleep like nothing had happened. He went to the doctor, he told doctors that he felt drunk, but that he hadn't had anything to drink. And so the doctors had no idea what was wrong with him. And then on January the 11th, 2000, he died of what was supposed to be a heart attack. He was only 38 years old. Now, people at 38 do have heart attacks. I mean, it was rare, but it happens. Following his death, doctors attributed his early demise to a heart attack, but his family wasn't sure. Now, they wanted an autopsy. His family wanted an autopsy, but Stacy refused an autopsy. She said later that she believed the doctors when he said that he died of a heart attack, so she had no reason to question it. She collected his $55,000 life insurance policy. And the next year, this always amazed me, these women, they, they find husbands so easily. I don't know. 
you know, if I, uh, uh, you know, they don't seem to have problems getting married. She was another one, wasn't she? That, um, oh God, Laurie Daybale, or, you know, she had loads of husbands, went through husband after husband. Anyway, the next year she met her second husband, David Castor, who then later on apparently committed uh, the big S. So this is their wedding. He looks a little bit like Michael, doesn't he? He does look a little bit like him. They look happy there. Anyway, after meeting uh, David in 2001, Stacey Castor married him in 2003. And it seemed like a strong marriage. Uh, Stacy later said David was very conscientious. He was very work driven. He was a support and strength and security to me. He had bad luck, just like Harold. Remember losing one husband? Uh, what, uh, that was. This is similar to that. It's like losing uh, one husband is an, is unfortunate. Losing two is sinister. So on August the 22nd, uh, 2005, bad luck struck her again. She called 911 in a panic, telling the operator that her husband had locked himself in their room and he wouldn't respond to her. She said, my husband just locked himself in the bedroom for the last day. I'm really When the police arrived, they found David Castor naked and dead in bed and they noticed green liquid in a glass next to the bed and a bottle of antifreeze nearby gosh Ooh. so the sergeant of the onondaga um, county sheriff's office said it seems to be a simple suicide by a simple suicide by antifreeze poisoning he said But a couple of things struck investigators as odd. Castor claimed that her husband had been depressed following the death of his father, but his ex-wife swore he would never kill himself. And the other odd thing is that he'd left his whole $300,000 estate to his wife and he had cut his son out of the legacy, which they found strange. Plus, detectives had discovered an unsettling clue in the Castor home, a turkey baster in the trash can. The turkey baster had traces of antifreeze as well as David Castor's DNA. And investigators had also found Stacey Castor's fingerprints on the bottom of the glass in the bedroom. So... Lead investigator Detective Dominic Spinelli explained the uh, fingerprints were in such a way as if it was someone held the glass from the bottom. Now, he knew that the placement of her fingerprints could have a logical explanation, but it could also suggest something sinister. Stacy may have held the glass up to his mouth when he was half unconscious. But they, they thought that the turkey baster had been used uh, to force feed him with antifreeze when he was sort of half unconscious. Anyway, the investigation. So this is the exhumation of Mike Wallace. Now they were buried next next to each other, which is quite strange, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so this uh, the police went off and exhumed the bodies then because they were suspicious of Stacy's story. They decided to, they need to get a better sense of Stacy. They wanted to speak to her ex-husband, Michael Wallace, and that's when they found out that he, in fact, had also died under mysterious circumstances. And that's why they decided to exhume his body. And Spinelli said, the last thing I want to do is disturb someone that's at peace, especially if nothing showed up at his, in his system. However, his hunch played off. Wallace's body showed traces of antifreeze poisoning. Suddenly, one of his strange symptoms that he'd had, like feeling drunk when he actually wasn't, made sense. That apparently is a classic symptom of antifreeze poisoning. 
So with a good idea of what might have happened to Wallace and, uh, sorry, Michael Wallace and David Castor, investigators decided to ask Stacey Castor some pointed questions. And that's when she got nervous. So they said she was pacing, she was surprised that we were there. Uh, Valerie Brogan, another detective on the case, said. So they went through a couple of questions with uh, Stacey. And then Spinelli asked her what he thought was a harmless question. Of the two glasses on Castor's beds on David Castor's bedside table, he asked, which glass had Castor, Stacy, poured cranberry juice in? And she replied, and I'm going to show you a video of the detective talking about this. When I poured the antifree, oh, I mean cranberry juice. And at this, so she she misspoke, and at this point she stopped the interview and accused the detectives of trying to frame her, and that's when she lawyered up. But they knew they were getting close to an arrest, even though they didn't have enough evidence just yet. However, yeah, she had one more trick up her sleeve. So this is her daughter, Ashley. And to all intents and purposes, they had a lovely relationship. But Stacy, uh, gosh, where's it gone now? It's just disappeared. So, but Stacy had other plans. She was determined to get away with it, and she was she didn't care who she was taking down with her. So, a few days after her slip of the tongue, detectives informed her that her 20-year-old daughter, Ashley... Oh, sorry, detectives informed her 20-year-old daughter, Ashley, that her father, Michael, had been poisoned and Ashley called her mother over for comfort. As the detectives listened over a wiretap, Stacy invited Ashley over for a drink because they'd had a hard day. So Ashley said, oh, I was like, cool, you know, what kind of teenager, teenager wouldn't think that that was awesome? Your parents just gave you permission to drink, sweet. Here she is, Stacey uh, Castor. What an evil woman. I mean, it's bad enough what she did to her husband's, but to do that to a daughter, it's just like, you just can't believe it. She didn't care who she took with her. She is a narcissist. So that same day, police arrested Stacy. Oh, hang on, I haven't told you. It didn't say. Ah, here we go, here we go. Sorry, skip past that. So after her mother made her a drink, Ashley felt tired. She went to sleep. The next day, Castor suggested they do it again. So again, Ashley drank something that her mother gave her. She later recalled it didn't taste very good, so her mother gave her a straw. Castor instructed Ashley to put the straw at the back of her throat, so she's probably saying to her, oh, it's strong alcohol, it doesn't taste very nice. Just like the night before, the cocktail made Ashley tired. She went to her room to lie down, but this time she didn't get up. And morning, Ashley was unresponsive. The next thing Ashley knew, she was in the hospital. A grim-faced detective was sitting before her. He told her that the EMTs had found her with a typed suicide note that confessed to the murders of Michael Wallace and David Castor. So both of them, you know, <laughs> she confessed, and God knows how old she was when the first guy died, when her father died. So anyway, she said, I'm like, what are they talking about? I didn't do any of these things that you're saying I did. So the note, which apparently rambled on for 750 words, but without punctuation, included lines like, oh, but now they do and they think you did it, but you didn't. It was me. But two detectives, the one thing in the note that stood out in particular was the spelling of antifreeze. The writer had spelled it anti-free, the same way that Stacy Castor had pronounced the word during her interrogation. 
So she was arrested. So that same day they arrested Stacy, and in February 2009, a jury convicted her of second degree murder of David, attempted murder of her daughter, and forging David Castor's will. Prosecutors had plenty of evidence. They had her fingerprints, the turkey based there, uh, and proof that she had written various drafts of Ashley's suicide note on her home computer. Not to mention that both her husbands had died of antifree poisoning. So there you go. That's uh, so she was convicted. She's never, she is no longer on this planet. Uh, she died while she was in prison. Uh, she's never confessed. So she even, you know, even when she was on her deathbed or whatever, when she was ill, she would not, she still would not admit it was her and admit that her daughter had nothing to do with it. Anyway, the media clamoured around the trial, calling her the Black Widow, and, you know, Castor's mother, Stacey Castor's mother, believes that Ashley Wallace is the true killer, her own granddaughter. So she said Ashley had ample time, although she was only 11 when her father died, ample opportunity. So she's saying that when Ashley Wallace was 11 years old, she gave her father antifreeze. Anyway, Stacey Castor too maintained her innocence. I did not kill Michael Wallace. I did not kill David Castor. And I did not try to kill my daughter, period. She said in 2009, and I will never say that I did, ever. Now, talk about karma. You know, sometimes karma is the best justice of all. Stacy died without ever admitting to killing either of her husbands. In 2016, she had a heart attack in jail and she never saw either of her daughters ever again. And Ashley said, she was my best friend too. She was, and then she took all that away. I would have done anything for her. But she decided she wanted to kill me instead. Okay, so we're going to have a little listen now. We're going, yeah, we're just going to we're going to have a look now at um, this witch herself actually talking talking because she was defending herself during the cross examination just to get a little look uh, at her. Oh, I don't think I was sharing it then. Hang on, let me do it again. Luckily, I checked back because sometimes I forget to, I don't press the right, I uh, don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Let me just, I'm sorry, I'm just going to put a couple of windows down. Uh, so... Okay, we're off. Dying and where it was going to be buried. And then that was a, that that was a suicide. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in 2000, when Michael died, and he told him that his heart, he had heart disease in his family, and they said it was a heart attack. Now it's 2005, and you say, well, David was talking about dying and where he was going to be buried. That's real poetic justice, isn't it, really? You know, that's she sort of had to back up the, um, the thing about the heart attack when Michael had a heart attack so young, and she backed it up, you know, saying that he had heart disease in his family and this, that, and that's why she didn't have a... Um, she wouldn't allow an autopsy, and then she died of a heart attack. 
There you go. That is true karma, isn't it? And then that was a, that was ruled a suicide, right? I didn't have any control over what who ruled what. Well, I didn't ask you whether you ruled a suicide. It was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. So. Isn't that an amazing coincidence, Mrs. Kester? That a guy, that a guy who's thinking about suicide is being murdered at the same time? I mean, did you ever think about that? Judge, judge. Oliver Lord. I never said David was contemplating suicide. Well, you thought it was a suicide, right? Yes. Okay, so now we know he was murdered. What are the odds that a guy who's thinking about killing himself is being murdered on the very weekend? He gets killed. That's like Lou Gehrig dying of Lou Gehrig's disease. It's yeah. an yeah. unbelievable coincidence. I, I, I'll sustain that. Well, how would you care to do that? Objection, that's the form of the question. No, I'll overrule it. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's what... She was very, she's very cold, isn't she? Very impassive. Um, there's not much emotion there. She's on trial for murdering two husbands and attempted murder of her daughter. And she's got no emotion. But anyway, she shows a little bit of emotion here. I'm going to show you now what her daughter said after the trial. Good morning Biggest. to both of you again. Thank you. Yeah. The biggest question I ask is why? Why did she do these things? I know that's probably never going to be answered. There are so many things that she has ruined. She'll so this is Ashley, obviously, who's speaking, and this is the other daughter, Bree. So neither of them ever spoke to her again. I'll never be able to see Bree graduate. My father will never take me down the aisle. She'll never get to see her grandchildren. All those things she took away from me. She killed two people and tried to kill me and blame it on me and blame me for the other deaths. That bothers me so much. She does look sort of upset slightly there, but you know, she never she never admitted to it. So there's always gonna be a pall over Stacy. Uh, sorry, not Stacy, over Ashley. I had to pretend for a year that everything was okay, that nothing was bothering me, even though I was worried about the trial and worried whether the jury would believe me. I hate my mother for ruining so many people's lives. I don't even know why she did it. What gave her the right to play God with people? And I hate her for having me be the one that found my dad, just like her for having Bree found me. I never knew what hate was until now. Yeah, so she was the one. She left her to find her dad dead. And she left Bree to find Ashley nearly dead. Oh, my God, what an evil woman. Even though I do hate her, I still love her at the same time. That bothers me. It's so confusing. How can you hate someone and love them at the same time? I just wish that she would say sorry for everything she did, including all the lies. And though, and I, and though I feel bad for her today as she sits there by all by herself, she's the one that did this to herself and nothing bothers her. After if she's still feeling sorry for her, you know, that's it. You're either a nice person or you're not. You, she's feeling sorry for her. When you're a nice person, you can't help but feel sorry for people, even when they're treating you like a twonk. She still cares about a mum. My mom is sentenced today. I'll go back to my loving home with people who care about me. She's not going to go home. And if she hadn't chose to do these things, she could be home with me and Bree. She would not have to worry about anything. I've cried enough tears about this, and I don't want to cry anymore. I just want it all to go away, but I know it will never go away. I have to live with this for the rest of my life. There are many, there are times when I get afraid, thinking my, I might turn out like her because oh. she was good at one time. Did you see that? She said, sometimes I get afraid because I think I might turn out like her because she was good at one time. 
you know these people they don't care about their children they don't care about anyone except themselves look at her face gosh but i know i won't and i and i know i could never hurt my children like she did i hate how she tried to make me look stupid in that note that she wrote I've tried so hard to make something of myself. I have a 3.9 GPA and still she tried to make me look stupid. Oh my God, this poor girl. She's feeling like she's got to justify herself because that witch cast aspersions on her. This is, that, that is the coercive control side of things, isn't it? When when people start making you question yourself because you think oh well if they're saying that about me then maybe it's true you know because people who are nice people they do doubt themselves don't they and then you get a woman like that just doesn't give a s-h-i-t what she's putting her own daughters through well mr fitzpatrick made her look stupid with her lies i hate how she made people choose side in our family with other with our friends Bree and I are children. People are supposed to stand up for us. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm sorry I'm not being funny, but if the choice was, oh, do you think this woman did it? Or do you think this 11-year-old child did it? You're more likely to go with the, the adult, aren't you? Why? Uh, uh. But she's an adult, and that is the decision she made. I think about this at night, and I can't even imagine what's going through her head. All the things that she can't do. I had all these fears about if the jury hadn't believed me. What if she got out and tried to hurt me again? Oh. Or what if she tried to hurt my sister? I didn't kill anyone, and I didn't try to kill... Oh, bless. What this? What these girls have gone through. So, yeah, they, they, thank God she was found guilty, because you know what it's like with trials. Doesn't take much, does it? It's just one thing wrong and it can all go the other way. That's why the police have got to be so careful what they you know, that they've got all their ducks in a row before they go into a trial. So she'll have been terrified because if 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 it if she had hadn't been found guilty and she came out, would she have hurt her or her sister? Thank God they've got each other. That's the only good thing. These two girls have got each other kill myself i would never leave my sister or matt i just don't understand how you can say you love someone and in the next breath try to kill them i wish she had told me what was going on she was my best friend and she took that all the way just because she got scared well i was scared too when i was in the hospital all by myself and i wanted my mom oh. but she was the one that did this i just want to sleep one night without when she was in the hospital, yeah, who would she want a mom? But it was a mom that had done it. My God, she's awful. I'm thinking about this, I'm not an angry person, and I hate being mad at her. I want to forget her, but forgive her, but I'm not sure if I can. I just hope God can forgive her. She has to listen to me this time. I didn't get a chance. Well, she'll have found out now whether God has forgiven her or not. I think God will have forgiven her. Because, uh, you know, I believe that when you go on to the next life, that's when you pay for whatever you pay for your sins. She'll have, she'll have paid for them in one way or another. I don't really, obviously, I don't know how it works. But um, I think you have to account for the things you've done. Maybe you get to come, you know, if you've done something like that, you get to come back and you have to go through that. I don't know to understand. Uh, obviously, I don't know what happens, but I am, you know, probably 98% certain that your actions, you do have to account for your actions. Chance to say goodbye. And this will be the last time I get a chance. As horrible as it makes me feel, this is goodbye, Mom. As hard as you tried... I survived and I will survive because now I'm surrounded by people that love me. I'm going to good, do good things in this world despite making me in every sense of the word an orphan. Thank you, Judge Fahey, for letting me express my feelings. Oh, bless that poor girl. Oof. So that was... Um... Yeah, 
let's just have a look if I can. I don't know what a daughter is doing now. So Stacy has died. Uh, I don't know how that how Ashley will have felt about that. I expect it made her sad, even though probably relieved as well because she's never ever got, got to face her again. But she's um, mourning for her mother, you know. She's lost her mother. Let's see if I can see what's happened to her now. Oh, she's been on Oprah Winfrey. Uh, let's have a look. Whoops, Let's see what it says. All right, talking about steps. So I look for oh, come on, just tell me. Ben Ashley. Right, I can't, it's not, it said it was saying uh, what was happening. Oh, do you have to go through the, oh no, that's no good. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, yeah, she's on, um, she's spoken to Oprah, she's on Oprah Daily. Uh, gosh, the thing is you have to go through the whole story before you... before you get to what you're trying to find. So she has to, ah... Right, we've got a little, uh, I bet I bet Oprah will do me for copyright. So it says she lives in New York, she's engaged to be married. She may have got married by now because I'm not sure when this is. Let's see what this video is. Just have a little look at this video. As I say, this may flag me up for copyright, but I'll just delete it then if it does. But let's see. into their house growing up did you ever imagine not a day in my life never give me your thoughts today we're just happy that it's over we really are now that i know that everybody knows that i didn't do it it's just 10 times later <laughs> we're gonna be able to move on and how so i already, we have. already have we already have thanks to my boyfriend and their family, their, their family we've moved on we started moving on the day we moved into their house. Growing up, did you ever imagine? Not a day in my life, never. She was like my best friend. She really Stacey. was, yeah, she really was. And she just ruined that trust. What was it like reading that It was really hard. I was really nervous. I was got to like, speak my mind. I didn't get to do that when I was testifying. and But it felt really good at the same time. It did. It was... A relief. And now you really believe you can move on and put this behind you. Yeah. Do you ever expect to hear from her again? Never. She had nothing to say in the courtroom today. I don't want to talk to her ever again. I really don't. I really have nothing to say to her. And I don't want to hear anything she has to say either, even if she did. When you got sick that day and you knew you'd been sickened, it's the point you found out that you were deliberately sickened by your mother. What did you think? I felt betrayed, like she just 
a bond that you should never break is a bond between your children and a mother. And she completely broke that bond when she did what she did. And now she, you believe justice obviously has been done. Yes. Things. And I'm glad she'll be away for a very long time and she can't hurt anybody ever again. Yeah. I wonder what she felt when she died. Anyway, so that's um, Ashley. I uh, have got, what else did I want to show? I've got something else here. I wanted to show somewhere, but I've, maybe I've lost it. <laughs> Not that. Uh, anyway, I think that's probably enough. But I, I thought I had something else to show you. But anyway, it's disappeared, so maybe not. So there you go. Not Stacy Caster. Not only she did what Harold did and killed two of her spouses for money, but she went that little bit step further and tried to frame her own daughter for their uh, murders. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? Anyway, as I say, she had a heart attack while she was in prison. I think it was in 2016 or 17. So she's gone from this earth, Stacey Caster. She's taken her secrets with her. She never admitted to it. And like Ashley was saying in there, she has split their family because some of the people in the family, including Stacey's mother, uh, believe that Ash still believe that Ashley did it, even though she would have only have been 11 years old when she supposedly killed her own father. What do you think? Okay, let me know in comments as always. Remember to live and love very carefully. Just don't have antifreeze in the house would be my answer. Luckily, I don't need it in Spain, but you know, uh, the thought of um, oh god, what. What horrible thing to do to poison somebody with antifreeze and know that you've done it because it wouldn't happen overnight. You know, it is, does tend to be, that's why it didn't work with Ashley. It may have worked the second time if her daughter and her other daughter hadn't managed to get the ambulance out in time. Um, that was what I had the ambulance call. But anyway, um, but with her husband's, you know, it happened over a long period of time. So that's not a heat of the moment thing, is it? I mean, the same with Harold. He planned his wife's murders over a long time. The, the, this is different, isn't it, from having an argument with someone and killing them in a fit of rage, which is still terrible, obviously. But, you know, everybody gets angry sometimes and sometimes people do things in a moment. Uh, but to have planned it and she's seen that her husbands, you know, were ill, watched it happening to them, watched them going to the police, uh, sorry, to the doctor and knowing that it was, all the time it was her that was doing it to them. I think they both like to drink about, you know, an alcoholic drink. So maybe it's easier to put it in an alcoholic drink. I don't know. I mean, you just imagine that you would taste it straight away, isn't it? So, yeah, my advice would be no antifreeze in the house. So, remember to always live and love very carefully, very wisely. I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God always go with you. Thank you.